of you believe you always give the customer more than they paid for? Absolutely right. I know that. We could hear there's a thousand stories in this room about how you've done it. A thousand stories. Whatever you want, you've got to give it away. A lot of you are leading teams. I can tell you how to have more power as a team leader than you've ever had in your whole life. Want to know how? You give the power away to the team. And they give it back to you a thousand times over in their love and their devotion. Ian has an uncanny way of reaching through to the heart and soul of every audience member. Clients constantly remark on just how on target his message is. He works tirelessly to understand the situation and your goals for the event. And no speaker will do more to ensure a powerful and seamless flow to your program, including listening to speakers who come before him. For information on how to book Ian Percy, please refer to the accompanying material. Now, to enjoy and learn from Ian's provocative and humorous insights on corporate vision, keep watching. Have you seen this one? I've seen this one a thousand times if I've seen it once. What gets me is they frame it and put it up on walls. Our mission is to become the preferred supplier in our chosen marketplace. Oh, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> I mean, how many meetings did that take? <laughs> you know? I mean, hello? <laughs> Do you think somebody else is out there saying, we want to be the third choice, right? I mean, come on. Folks, I don't have any degrees in business administration at all, but it seems to me if you're not the preferred supplier, you don't have work. <laughs> that's no mission. That's survival. Jeez. Here's another one. I remember this one so clearly. It came from an insurance company. And I remember it clearly because they had carved it into little pieces of granite they gave every employee to show you how flexible they were going to be. <laughs> not, not a word of a lie to you. Not a word of a lie. The central line of their mission read, to return to the shareholders 15% return on equity. I said, this is a joke. It's a joke. You actually get up on a Monday morning, give me 15% or give me death. Okay? I said, at your funeral, you want the clergyman to stand over your coffin. Our dearly departed brother, return to the shareholder, 15% ROE. <laughs> <laughs> said, I said, I got news for you. The shareholders ain't going to your funeral. They don't care you're gone. They're sitting back going, next. But you hope your kids show up and talk about what kind of a mom and dad you were. You hope your buddies show up and talk about what kind of a friend you were. You hope your old employees show up and talk about what kind of a leader you were and how if it wasn't for you in their life, they would never have become what they've become. 15% ROE. It's the ecology. Your mission, your corporate, richly imagined future should be ecological. It should be about the question, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Children know this. In every culture of this planet, every culture, after learning how to call its mom and its dad, every child asks the one universal question, why? Which mother in this room has ever leaned over a crib? Can you say why? Why? No, it drives us nuts. Huh? We usually wrap it all up by saying, because I said so. Oh, thank you for clarifying. Huh? Children are born asking the most spiritual question in the universe, and we beat that out of them by grade three. Why? Why are you doing this? Why this policy? Why this procedure? Why this approach? Why are we here? What's the why of our lives? It's got to be ecological. What if you walked into your doctor's office and you saw this? <laughs> You wouldn't stay for a minute, because right? it's self-centered and it's selfish. What makes you think your clients really care about how much money you want to make for the next fiscal year? Folks, we have to write richly imagined future statements so clear when, that our, when our clients read it, it brings tears to their eyes and they say, oh, that's what we want too. Let's do it together. That's when you know you've got something. It's the why. 
I was watching television a little while ago. Well, I wasn't really watching. It was on. I was working. You know, you know how a lot of us have it. And, and, and I wasn't paying attention until the, the commentator said to somebody on the television, tell us your mission statement. No, that's like ringing a fire bell for me, I'll tell you. So I stopped back and walked over to the TV. And it was a story about, about two old retired doctors who had set up a, a health clinic in some poor rural part of the southern United States. And, and, and this guy said, tell us your mission statement. And this old guy, long white hair, you could see the tears coming into his eyes. And he said, our mission, he said, is to bring hope and healing to this community without regard to race or income. And then the, the line that brought tears to my eyes was, and perhaps in the process, heal ourselves. I said, whoa, I am standing on holy ground. That, folks, is precious. How many corporate mission statements make you stand back in awe and reverence? get to do this. What kind of a calling would that be? The rich, the imagined future. <laughs> and the secret, the secret you see is to, is to see it so clearly like it's here. Your children know how to do this. You're going on a driving holiday with your kids? Yeah, you're going to Disneyland or someplace, right? You right away to the automobile club, they send you a little booklet, little maps, little felt markers, and you just go here, go here, go here. You've done this. Right? The night before you're going to go, you're getting the family together around the kitchen table because you want to get the kids ready. You lay out some rules. Now, first of all, take every toy you own. Right? And you start showing them, we're going to go here, and they show them the little map, and you show them the little brochure of the motel you're going to stay at the first night. Well, on the, on the front cover of every motel brochure is a picture of the pool. Oh, 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 can we go swimming? Can we go swimming? Can we go swimming? Do we join in their excitement as parents? No. What do we do? Oh, we'll have to wait and see. We have to wait and see? What, are they filling it in now or what? <laughs> we have to wait and see. And then we add, you know that you've done this, you confess it to me. Then we add this phrase, now don't get your hopes up too high. Right? Oh, you wouldn't want to have your kid have high hopes, would you? No. No, let's get them ready for life. <laughs> the next morning, you have not moved one inch out of your driveway. The back seat is filled with children and every toy you could think of. Juice boxes already half gone. You have not moved one inch. What are your kids wearing underneath their jeans? They're bathing suits. They're acting as though the future were here. They are ready for the richly imagined future. You drive, you drive, you drive. You pull into the motel. Sure enough, there's the pool. The kids in the back seat are doing what? They're getting undressed. You haven't even parked yet. Do you join in their excitement? No, no. First, we say we have to get settled. <laughs> we have to get settled. Because where's your bathing suit if you even brought it? It's in the bottom of the suitcase. You are so boring. <laughs> When's the next time you're having one of these innovation conferences? Okay, I hope it's soon. Can we, can we have this agreement? The next time you have a conference like this, everybody wear your bathing suit underneath your clothes. Yeah. I don't care if it gives you a rash. You live as though we're here, folks. It's here, it's here, it's here. Reach out and grab it. We sincerely thank you for your consideration. Please refer to the accompanying material for contact information.